Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Darcy Byrne. I'm the Mayor of the Inner West. Uh, people in Grainler and the Inner West of Sydney are very excited to have a local running for Prime Minister of Australia, and it's my great pleasure to be able to welcome Anthony Albanese to the Orange Grove Markets. Well, thanks very much, Das. It's good to be back in Grainler. Uh, in the last uh, week, I've been in Queensland, in Western Australia, in South Australia, in the ACT and Victoria, uh, as well as uh, here in New South Wales. Well, I think Australians are used to Scott Morrison keeping them waiting. He kept them waiting for the vaccine rollout. He kept them waiting when it came to actions on bushfires. He kept them waiting to provide support for flood victims. Now he's keeping Australians waiting before he calls the election. But he should just get on with it. Uh, he should let the Australian people decide. Because we have a very clear plan for a better future for Australia. A better future that involves strengthening Medicare, making more things here, more secure work, dealing with the cost of living through cheaper childcare and cheaper energy prices. We have a plan for a better future the government just has a priority of trying to get through the next six weeks. Uh, the offers run out as soon as people have cast their ballot papers. Then it will be back to business as usual, a government treading water, a government not putting in place any economic, social or environmental policy reform, and a Prime Minister who's more obsessed by looking after his own interests and the interests of the Liberal and National Party than there is looking after the needs of the country. That requires a vision for a better future and practical plans to implement that future. Do you expect the election to be called tomorrow? Well, I, I can't see how a Prime Minister who really doesn't like scrutiny will allow the Parliament to come back on Monday in the form of the House of Representatives, and that's what will have to happen. So either the election will be called today or the election will be called tomorrow morning is highly likely uh, because uh, this Prime Minister, though I think it's been a bit of a game, frankly, uh, the Prime Minister last year gave up on governing and said he was campaigning. We had a budget handed down that even the government doesn't talk about anymore because it was so, so thin, so devoid of any vision for economic reform anything beyond one-off payments that end as soon as people have cast their ballot papers. Is the underdog in this election race? Well, Labor has only won government three times from opposition uh, since the Second World War. So it's a mountain that Labor has to climb. Uh, the government has enormous advantages. Uh, we're seeing that done at the moment. One of the reasons why the election isn't being called is so that the government can use taxpayer funds to make advertisements that they think advances the Liberal Party. Uh, they can make appointments of mates to various boards. Uh, they can engage in the sort of practice uh, that uh, reaffirms two things. It reaffirms uh, that we need a National Anti-Corruption Commission and it reaffirms that this government only acts and governs in its own interest, not in the interest of the Australian people. So we have a mountain to climb. Uh, the government goes into this election as favourites. Uh, governments uh, win, uh, get re-elected much more often than government changes hands in this country. And Scott Morrison has a considerable advantage uh, in going into this election. Well, people know what I stand for. People know my values. Uh, people know that I'm someone who brings people together. If you look at the reforms I did as Minister over six years, measures like the creation of Infrastructure Australia as Australia's first ever Infrastructure Minister, uh, measures including the creation of Regional Development Australia, the Australian Council, Council of Local Government to deal with local government about their priorities in their local communities, not a command centre in Canberra. Uh, they're the sort of reforms that I put in place, working with business, working with unions, 
I also put in place uh, practical measures based upon boosting productivity, boosting the national economy uh, through our road and rail and ports and broadband investments. Uh, people also know uh, about Scott Morrison. Now, th there's one thing, one area where Scott Morrison uh, did get it right, and that's that Australians do know him. They do know that he said, I don't hold a hose when Australia was uh, in, under the worst bushfires uh, that we have seen. They do know that he said it wasn't a race when it came to purchasing enough vaccines. They do know that he was complacent with regard to ordering rapid antigen tests. Uh, they do know that he's presided over almost a decade of flatlining wages and rising prices. And they do know that he has presided over real pressure on their cost of living. And yet he basically thinks they've never had it so good. Well, the truth is Australia deserves better. I'll deliver a better government. We're a great country, but we can be a better government. We can be a better country with a better government. Scott Morrison keeps criticising you each day as a blank page on policy. How much more policy details are we going to see from Labor during the campaign? I've got so much. The, the question for Scott Morrison is, what is his policy that he's taking to this election? Because I haven't seen any. He handed down a budget where all the handouts end once people have cast their ballot papers. There's no policy that he's put in place and he's the government. He's the government. There's no economic policy going forward in terms of reform. There's no social policy reform going forward. At the last election he did have policies. National Anti-Corruption Commission that he said he'd implement. Tick tock, tick tock. The clock's ticking, nothing's happened. He said we'd advance uh, a voice for First Nations people in the Governor-General's speech at the beginning of this parliament. Again, nothing has happened. Uh, on so many areas, nothing's happened from last time. So this time he's going in an election where he's just talking about me. Well, if he wants to talk our policy about our policy, he can talk about our industry policy for a national reconstruction fund to create new businesses, powered by cheaper and cleaner energy with our Powering Australia Fund uh, plan that will create 604,000 new jobs, that will create $52 billion of private sector investment, that will reduce emissions by 43% by 2030, or our cheaper childcare plan that will help families where no family will be worse off, but most families will be much better off who have children in childcare. Our aged care plan, where we've taken the recommendations of the Royal Commission and said, guess what, we're going to implement it. And just yesterday I was with Maggie Beer, a great Australian, who will support the Maggie Beer Foundation uh, to do the work to make sure that older Australians can get better nutrition. Uh, our plans uh, right across the board for we will, we will advance a so voice to Parliament. You've seen a policy announcement yesterday, one the day before, one the day before that, and you'll see more in the lead up uh, to polling day, whether it's on May 14 or May 21. But I make this point. We have national broadband policy out there. We have infrastructure policy. We have industry policy. We have women's policy. We have industrial relations policy for secure work. We have a climate policy that will drive the economy. We have a policy for skills that includes 465,000 free TAFE places, 20,000 university places. We have a comprehensive suite of policies out there right now. We'll have more to say in the coming weeks. They're doing it tough. But what government should do is each and every budget examine payments and see what they can do uh, to alleviate cost of living. Uh, there has been a small increase uh, in terms of new start, but quite clearly I accept that people are doing it really tough. Well, they know about Scott Morrison.
they, and, and they know me. Everywhere I go, um, I have had an extraordinarily positive response. And uh, I have spent uh, the last three years uh, engaging with people face to face. In, in January, I did my fourth road trip through Queensland, from Cairns to Maryborough. Uh, in most, uh, if that was in Europe, we would have crossed eight countries uh, during that visit. And we engaged in 20 towns uh, in 10 days. And that was just, that was the fourth road trip I've done throughout Queensland. Uh, I was in WA again uh, this week in South Australia. I was on my uh, fifth visit to South Australia uh, this year, including my third in a very uh, brief period of time. Uh, Australians know uh, that uh, Labor has a plan for the future and they know that this government is out of puff. It's out of ideas, it's out of time and it should, it should be out of office, but that will be a decision uh, for the Australian people at the election. The One. Well, well, we'll examine those measures, but this, this is a government that have spent, uh, not uh, in the millions, in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Remember, uh, the, uh, the, the company that had a shed on Kangaroo Island that got a, a billion dollar uh, contract. Oh, this is a government uh, that have uh, wasted uh, billions of dollars of taxpayers' money. Think about one issue in which we will have a Royal Commission, the issue of robo-debt. This government says we can't afford for older Australians get, to get decent food, we can't afford to pay aged care workers more, we can't afford to have a nurse in every nursing home, but they spent five and a half billion dollars on subcontracts with Japan firstly, they went down that road, then France, and all they've got is a torn up contract to show for it. This is a government on robo-debt that had to pay compensation of over a billion dollars. Our aged care package was worth $2.5 billion. Our package in terms of childcare that will provide uh, relief and assistance uh, for uh, working families is worth double that. Uh, we think they're priorities. This government has got all of its priorities wrong and when it comes to spending uh, there are so many issues in which we can see waste and indeed in some cases uh, just dodgy arrangements. Uh, we still haven't heard any decent explanation for why they paid $30 million for a block of land that was worth just $3 million. But it's no wonder uh, they're resisting having a National Anti-Corruption Commission. So just quickly to follow up that, are you comfortable, are you comfortable with the foundation being given more than $18 million? There was no tender process? Look, I, I haven't examined uh, those details. Uh, so I, I can't comment specifically. What I can comment is that this is a government, this is a government that are, are not prepared uh, to have any scrutiny and don't spend taxpayers' money wisely. They treat taxpayers' money as if it's Liberal Party money and they do it consistently. Well, we'll have more to say in those areas, and uh, today's not the day, Michael. Uh, so we'll have we'll have more to say, but just wait for the Lilyfield pause. But uh, can I say this? A range of businesses are really struggling at the moment, and we will need. Uh, temporary workers uh, in areas where there's acute skill shortages. Uh, this government at the beginning of the pandemic told people to leave and they did and there are a range of industries that will need uh, temporary workers. But, but no, no, no it's not at all, it's not at all. Uh, you will need that but what you need to do as well is to have more pathways to permanency. 
uh, to give people more security. So that take for example, I've been speaking with various people in the hospitality industry. Um, if you talk with uh, any of those people, they'll tell you that there have been shortages of chefs in this country, not for a year or six months or the need to have a temporary uh, visa uh, filling that hole. Uh, it is a permanent need. Why is it that we aren't delivering more permanent pathways? More permanent pathways. Because what the pandemic has exposed and uh, this is what Christina Keneally was certainly talking about, is our vulnerability as an economy uh, when there are shutdowns of our borders. We have become too reliant upon temporary workers. And so that when the borders were shut, uh, now you have, for example, restaurants that can't open uh, six or seven days a week uh, because they simply don't have the staff. Uh, what we need to do is to have a sensible discussion about migration policy and make sure that uh, we can deliver. And the other thing that happens if people are able to uh, put down uh, those foundations here is that they're then able to pay taxes, they're able to start a family, they're able to uh, look at uh, more secure uh, involvement in their local communities. At the moment, uh, they're not able to do that. And we saw uh, for something that I've seen, as you know, Michael, I regularly uh, volunteer at uh, Bill Cruz at the Exodus Foundation. Now, historically, when you've gone there, you've seen people who uh, might have issues with, uh, with drugs, homelessness, a range of issues, really doing it tough. One of the things that you saw was uh, people who were here on visas who were left without any support at all, uh, queuing to get a meal. Uh, during the day because they were reliant totally upon charity. And the charities did a great job during that, uh, but it exposed as well some of the human cost of people not having that security. Yeah, sure. What's your name? I don't think you met me at Kirribilli House. Right. I think um, uh, the issue of, uh, of foster children uh, is, is one in which uh, we see the best of Australians. I know personally uh, a, a number of my friends who've really assisted people over a period of time. And uh, in terms of it's run by the states, not run by the Commonwealth, uh, we do have a federal system uh, whereby the federal government are in charge of many things and the state governments are in charge of many things. Uh, foster uh, care is the responsibility of Department of Community Services in this state and one of the things that happens in the Commonwealth, quite frankly the states are, are, are closer to the people at delivering community services than the Commonwealth is. Uh, but if there's some practical way in which, uh, in which uh, we can provide um, some support to states and territories uh, then I'm always up for positive discussions. Thanks very much.